Thanks a lot. So I'd like to thank very much the organizers for the invitation. It's a true pleasure to be here. It takes me back to my youth, which is always good, right? When I was a PhD student, I used to spend several hours here at the library. So it's really nice to be back. OK, so everything I want, I'm going to tell you about today is joint work with Jean Porti. And um, well, I just take the occasion to do some kind of advertising for um, character varieties over uh, fields of positive characteristic. So I hope I'll try to convince you there's something to, to study there, to do there. We'll see. So the plan of my talk would be like this. So I'll try to review a little bit what character varieties are, because I guess there are several students in the audience. So I apologize with people that are experts in the field. Um, try to be patient with me. I'm not an expert myself. So um, then I'll try to tell you why this character varieties over fields of positive characteristics should be interesting or should be studied or something. And um, after that, trying to tell you, giving you some results, well, some very basic results, I need to start with some other general results, OK, on uh, character varieties of knots. So I'll give two types of results on character varieties of knots and use these to give, well, uh, to say something about uh, character varieties in, po in positive characteristic, and in particular, ramification phenomena. So it doesn't mean much like that. I'll try to explain what that means during the talk. And at the very end, if I got a little bit of time, I'll try to mention something about the proofs of these res general results about um, character varieties, not necessarily in uh, overfields of, of positive characteristic. OK, so uh, let's go. So w to start, to understand what character varieties are, you have to start by understanding what uh, representation varieties are. So you, you take G, uh, a group which is finitely presented, So say you have x1, xn generators with some relations. Uh, and you want to understand, you want to consider the set of all representations of your group G into uh, SL to, say, C. OK? So what do you do? Well, you have to map your generators somewhere to some matrix. So your generator xi goes to some matrix, a two by two matrix, say i11 one, one, i, i12 i, i21 i, i22 two, two, i. And then, well, this mapping extends to a representation of the whole group, provided that when you have um, a relation rj in the in the generators, and you plug in, well, your matrix is there. So you have the same word, but in these matrices now. Well, what you get is the identity. And that's necessarily a sufficient condition to have a representation. Um, and of course, you have also, you want these to belong to SL to C. So well, the determinant must be 1. OK. Good. So this is a nice set, but it's a little bit big. And you'd like to you know, consider that two representations are basically the same if they are conjugate. So you just. Well, you, what you would like to do is just quotient out the set that you have by the action of uh, SL to C by conjugacy. And well, the action of, by conjugacy factors through 
the quotient of SL2C by its center. So that's PSL2C. Oh, okay, so that's the idea. You want something small that gets all the information you have in the representation variety. Uh, there's only some problems. In general, of course, you have a topology huh, on this set that comes from the topology of SL2C. These sets live inside some C to the 4N. Yeah. Um, but as you know, quotient can be very badly behaved. And uh, so if you, if you think as a topologist, um, at least you want your points to be closed. So what you do when you take this quotient is um, you look at the orbits of your action. If they are closed, fine, that's a point in the quotient. If they are not, you collapse orbits whose closures intersect. Okay, so if you are more of an algebraic geometer and not a topologist like me, you think differently. You think that these guys are uh, algebraic sets and actually are called, well, varieties also, although they're not necessarily irreducible. And uh, you can think of them, I mean, thinking of an algebraic set is the same thing as thinking of uh, the ring of coordinates over the algebraic set. And given the ring of coordinates over um, R of G, well, you just take uh, the, core, the, the functions that are invariant by the action. And that's, again, a ring. And you just consider uh, the variety that's associated to that ring. OK, so let me see what's next. OK, so as I was saying, um, all the, the conditions that you have here are polynomials. And actually, there are nice polynomials that have integer coefficients. A, uh, I, uh, well, huh. that wasn't a nice choice of coefficient, uh, of indices. So let me just change these. Okay. Okay, so this is i, j, k, like that. And um, so um, you have two things here. So it's clear that r of, r of g uh, is defined by polynomials with co coefficients in, in the integers. It's not as straightforward to see that uh, that's the same. That's also true for the character variety, so for the quotient. But it's still true. I mean, you have to believe me. Um, and uh, actually, what's even more interesting is that everything that I've told you till now does never uses the fact that we're working over C. I mean, the coefficients here are just, you know, we could as well work over Q or whatever. Only that if you do some algebraic geometry, you'd like to work with um, algebraically closed fields. So that's why you choose C, for instance. But the good point is that if you'd like to consider representations over, say, the algebraic closure of some finite field of positive characteristic, then, well, you just take the same equations, mod them out mod p, and you're done. You're good. So that's the same polynomials that gives you, give you the, the character variety of the representation variety will give you um, uh, the character variety over uh, fpq when you think of them uh, as you know, classes. I mean, the coefficients are classes mod p now. So that's good. Uh, not necessarily. It's not even. I mean, it's not even reduced here. I was telling you, uh, it's called variety, but it's not irreducible in general. Okay. Um, so that's what I was telling you, and something that you know 
people do, that work in algebraic geometry know very well is that actually, um, if you look at your variety over C, or if you look at it over uh, a field of positive characteristic, generically what you see is the same thing. Meaning that if you have, you have the same number of components, the components have the same dimensions, and, and so on and so forth. But sometimes, for certain bad primes that are called ramified, things happen. Things happen that may be, I don't know, dimension grows up, or some uh, components, some irreducible components disappear, or something like that. And this happens for a finite number of primes. Uh, what I, had, I didn't say, and I had to, is that what I'm going to tell is for prime characteristic different from two. Two is a, a very odd prime, although it's even. I'm sorry to say so. So it really behaves badly. So uh, it's not even clear, not even true that um, the equations are the same over um, a field of characteristic two. So forget about two. And um, so primes for me are odd. Two is just a stupid number. So why would you care? Why would you consider these? Well, um, of course, as I've described it, um, you might wonder that uh, the representation variety or the character variety may depend on the choices that you have here, of the choice of representation. But if you change representation, uh, pardon, sorry, presentation, if you have a different presentation, you have Tizza transforms that uh, take you from one to the other, and these induce um, morphisms, isomorphisms of, uh, between the character varieties or representation varieties or whatever you want, and moreover, these are defined over the integers, just like the equations. So, um, the isomorphism class or, of this variety is well defined, only depends on your group. And by the way, um, what group I will be interested in? Well, the group I'll be interested in are fundamental group or compact manifolds. And more specifically, as I told you before, I'm interested in fundamental group of null exteriors. So just think your favorite knot. Please choose it to be hyperbolic, so it's not, well, it's meaningful in some sense. And that's your G. Fundamental group of that knot is G. OK, so the point is this um, character variety encodes, I mean, is itself an invariant of your group and so of your manifold or of your knot. And in any case, anything that you can uh, construct in a natural way from your character variety is, uh, again, uh, an invariant. So for instance, things that can be constructed starting from uh, the character variety are things like the A-polynomial um, for basically for hyperbolic knots or uh, for a hyperbolic knot uh, you know that you have the holonomy representation in PSL2C. This representation lifts to SL2C and, and lives, if you have a knot, uh, on a curve, so on a, an irreducible component of dimension one. So you always have this component, which is the component that was used by Thurston to prove um, uh, the... Uh, hyperbolic dense surgery theorem, for instance, okay? And uh, so that component, that one-dimensional component, may be non-smooth, may be singular, but there's a unique way to desingularize it. Once it's desingularized, it's just a uh, Riemann surface, and you can, for instance, consider a gene, something that Peterson and Alan Reed here um, studied, and the genus is again another invariant that you can consider. And then the other information that, that you can uh, 
the dues you can have from the study of the character variety. For, for instance, um, color shelling theory allows you to find essential surfaces inside your manifold uh, just by looking at curves in, your, um, character, in the character variety of the fundamental group of the manifold. And that uses something that Ian Agol was describing this morning, this bus there, uh, tree built out of uh, rings. Okay, so I won't say much more about this, but um, in the same spirit, all these strange primes that, you can, that can appear, okay, these ramified prime, they're also invariants. What kind of invariants are they? What are they telling you? What's, what happens and what's the relationship with the topology or the geometry of your manifold? That's what I would like to understand. And so far, I have to say, uh, not much is known, okay? So, why would you care? Okay, so um, when uh, Joan and I started thinking about this, um, the, say, the initial motivation, which is sort of obsolete now, it's not really interesting at this point, is um, this, I was telling you this color shale in theory allows you to find essential surfaces in, the, in, the, in your manifold by looking at the character variety. It happens that some surface, some essential surfaces cannot be found in this way. They are not detected by the character variety over SL2C. And so uh, our original question was, can, be, can they be detected in characteristic P for one of these uh, ramified primes P? And well, now this question is, well, not, not very interesting anymore because um, a recent result of Friedel, Kitayama, and Nagel says that you can always find these essential manifolds provided that you consider uh, character varieties over, well, uh, corresponding to representation in SL and C. So if you in increase the dimension of your representation, you're, you're good, okay, for some N large enough, okay? Also, um, this or original question we have um, seems very hard to, I mean, yeah. Okay, so it means that, um, so essential surfaces correspond to ideal points of, uh, of your character variety. And ideal points of, this, of the character variety give you valuations, and the valuations, just like tomorrow, gives you action on trees. And then the action on trees give you surfaces which are, say, uh, correspond to stabilizers of, their the fundamental group correspond to stabilizers of edges on the tree. So if your surface is one of these, is detected, but there are some other which are not. And uh, the point is that the non-examples that are known so far were given by Shanuel and Zhang, I'm not sure that's the correct pronunciation, so forgive me, um, are somehow structural. So, um, they build them so uh, representations of are killed over them. I don't know. I, I don't want to enter into details, but there's something which is the construction uh, is not something that related to C. It's just it's really structural to SL whatever field of you use. Okay, so it seems very difficult um, that. All, well, for sure not all undetected surfaces can be detected in characteristic P. And even if there are surfaces that are detected in characteristic P, and, but not in, correct, in characteristic zero, we don't have any examples. So, so far is, we don't know, okay? But still, I mean, it's not even that easy to understand what kind of phenomena 
happen. And let me see what I'm going to tell you next. Um, yeah, maybe I'll come back to that later. So uh, still, you would like to understand what happens. What happens? What are these primes? What's the relationship with the geometry and the topology of the manifold or the knot or whatever? And, and also, give examples. So what can happen? Why it happens? OK. And, um, and what, what's the relationship with the geometry and topology of the manifold? That's, that would be, I think that would be nice. And um, the point is that we have examples, but they're sort of artificial. I mean, um, we really need to have examples of character varieties in whatever, okay, whatever characteristic, and use these to give examples of ramification. The point is that so far, the examples of ramification are somehow, you know, uh, built so they work. So we don't have interesting examples. And the examples we have are all based on the fact that in characteristic P, parabolic elements have order P which is kind of stupid, but it's, it's central in what we will be constructing later on. Okay, so it would be nice to see something smarter, something that happens for a more geometric reason and not just this stupid algebraic reason, okay? So far, I don't know. And um, yeah, before I did tell you this, maybe I'll just add something. Okay, and um, why is it so difficult? The point is that um, the computational complexity when you want to study character variety, varieties is soon very, very difficult to, uh, to handle, okay? Either you have very stupid examples and so nothing happens, nowhere, or you just can't do computations. And, well, what can you do? I mean. So you need to find some generic ways to give, inf to find information, species of information about your varieties and exploit these. But of course, since they're generic, you never find, um, I don't know, very specific behaviors. Okay, so um, in the next slides, I just want to uh, give you some results about um, character varieties of knots, uh, they be character varieties of two class of knots, very specific class of knots, and these are sort of general and tell you um, how they look, or at least something about their structure. So the first family of knots I want to consider is um, a subclass of Montezinos knots. So what are Montezinos links? Montezinos links are guys that look like this. So every box here represents a rational tangle just like this one. So you plug a guy like this one in each box and you have, I don't know, n boxes or whatever. And the result is what is called a Montezinos link. And I'm not interested in any kind of Montezinos link. I just want the link to be a knot, so just one component. And moreover, I want it to be a uh, what we, we call of Kinoshita Terazaka type, which means that basically in one of these boxes, so these boxes are very complicated tangles, but their behavior is just like this. So you have two strands here and two strands here, and then you can do three things basically. Either you're here and you go back, or you go, you're here and you go straight, or you're here and you go straight across. And the other guys, well, can, can't do anything else but fill in the other two dots, right? So we want that in one, exact, precisely one of these boxes, the behavior is like this. Okay? So, um, 
that's what we call Ekinoshita Teresaka, Montesinos Knot. And, um, and uh, yeah, for these guys, this is a result that we have. We can say something about their character varieties. And what we say is the character varieties of these guys have components of very large dimension, and in some, time, some, in some cases, is a lots of components of large dimension, <clears throat> which are, I'm saying, non-standard. So <clears throat> as I've told you before, <clears throat> uh, for, for instance, a hyperbolic knot, we know by Thurston there's this curve inside. You also know, OK, so the list of things should be on the next slide. So there are certain components that are well known. So the first one is um, the component of abelian characters. So the fundamental group of the knot, the abelianization, that is the uh, integer homology is just Z. And well, you just map Z wherever you want in SL to C. And so you have just a line. OK, that works for each knot. You have that line there. Very nice to know. Then you have, if your knot is hyperbolic, you have this other curve that contains the lift of the allonomy of the hyperbolic structure. And if your knot is a hyperbolic Montesinos knot, you have something else. Uh, it's what is called the Teichmuller component. And this is, OK, so if you consider um, the quotient of your not group by the relation that the meridian has order two. That's just the fundamental group of the orbifold where the knot has um, uh, ramification of order two. Well, this guy is a cipher fiber orbifold. It has a base of the orbifold, which is hyperbolic, and it's a two-dimensional orbifold that has a whole space of representation and these characters are precisely the characters of those representation. Okay? And these, in, in general, are um, pretty large in, with respect to the number of rational tangles, or if you want, the number of minimal number of generators of, of the fundamental group of the knot. But there are more. Okay, so let me give some, make some remarks here. Um, the, these extra components that we find uh, can be, well, you can find knots such that the, the number of this component is arbitrarily large, and that's because that's true for uh, two bridge knots and was proved by Otsuki, Riley, and Sakuma. And basically, um, the idea is that um, these representations and these characters that we consider uh, are built starting with representation of two bridge knots, which are related to these rational tangles, tangles that you've seen at the beginning. Um, and also, I said at the, the, in the statement of the theorem, I said there are components, there is at least one component of parabolic um, characters, meaning that the meridian of the knot is sent to a parabolic, and another one where uh, the, the trace of the meridian is non-constant. And in that case, I've said, I said that the dimension of these components is n minus 2, where um, n is related to the number of rational tangles of the knot. But in fact, there are components of every dimension from 1 to n minus 2. Um, um, and as I was telling you, these components are built, I mean, these representations and their associated characters are built using representations of two bridge knots. And uh, actually, they're all representation of a specific quotient of the knot group that I'm not going to enter into details, but keep in mind that all these, uh, these components that we've, we've found uh, come from representation of a, of, of a specific quotient. And finally, of course, I'm not saying that that's the whole 
that's, that's everything. There may be other things. There may be uh, symmetries that give you other things. I'm just telling there's all this stuff, which is more than what is already, was already known before, but there may be more that I'm not even able to access, understand, or see. OK, so this is everything I want to say on this result. Um, and I won't even touch on the proof of this, because I already yeah, um, gave seminars on that. I don't want to uh, be too boring. So, OK, so the next result is for symmetric knots. Um, so what's a symmetry of a knot? A symmetry of a knot is a diffeomorphism of finite order, order of the tree sphere, which uh, leaves the knot invariant. And you want it to be orientation preserving. And uh, in our case, since at the end I'd be interested with these odd primes, whatever, I'm only interested in uh, symmetries of odd prime order which means that these guys um, have just two possible behaviors. Either they act freely, or they act with a circle of fixed points, and the circle is, a non, is an unknotted circle, so a natural circle, a rotation around an axis in S3. So we're interested in these guys, and uh, as usual, I'll be interested in hyperbolic knots, Yeah. So um, this is a result we have. So you get you take a hyperbolic knot, and you assume that it is it has a symmetry, and it's periodic of order p. So it means that the the symmetry has a fixed point set, non-empty fixed point set. So if you consider the character variety. It must contain a subvariety which is invariant by the induced action of this symmetry. And that's the variety we're interested in. And again, variety is algebraic set here. Okay? And it happens that uh, this algebraic set contains at least p minus 1 over 2 one dimensional components. And. Uh, that are invariant. And so and these components that sit inside this subvariety are actually components of the of the whole variety. They're not, you know, they're not like intersection with, I don't know, hypersurfaces or something. They're really components of the whole variety and not just of the invariant subvariety. On the other hand, if you consider uh, not that there are Free symmetric, so they emit a symmetry uh, without fixed points. Uh, in that case, you can find uh, for each odd prime p uh, uh, a knot with a free symmetry of order p, such that the, the, num the number of one-dimensional components is bounded by a constant independent of p. Okay, so what do you like to sort of, to, to summarize this? It means that theoretically, um, you, your character variety should be able to detect if you are not as a periodic symmetry of large order, or, um, Understand if given a symmetry, the symmetry that you have has, have is free, okay? Theoretically, because I mean it's much easier to understand by hand if a knot has a symmetry than compute the character variety and say anything about it. But anyway, and um, so this point of view uh, was already exploited by. Uh, Hilden, Lozano, and Montesinos. Um, and so they, they used the existence of periodic symmetries to, um, to say something about character varieties of periodic knots 
because these can be seen on the character variety of a two component link, which is somehow simpler than the original knot. And so the character variety is simpler and hopefully computable. Okay? So that was their idea also. Okay. So now what I want to do is try to use this results to say something about um, um, character varieties over fields of positive characteristic. Okay, so let's use the first, the first result. So um, what do I say here? Um, we have that. Um, you take, I, I was telling you that in this result about uh, Montesinos knots, these extra representations that we have that give you all these extra components in the character variety, they all come from some specific quotient of the knot group. So this specific quotient of the knot group, uh, let's call it gamma. And now you can consider a an, uh, an further quotient where uh, the meridian of your group, so the generator of the homology, if you like, um, as order p. So this also gives you representation of your original group. And this specific quotient, so I'm considering now the character variety of this specific quotient, and then generically, this character variety ramifies at p. Why is that? Uh, uh, so what, what, what does it mean? I mean, what's the ramification situation here? Uh, well, the dimension of uh, some component of case, some uh, component of, of the representation of the character variety of this gamma p um, has generically dimension n minus 2 in characteristic 0, while it has dimension at least n, uh, sorry, forget about it, as dimension n minus 3 in characteristic 0, but as dimension at least n minus 2 in characteristic p. And actually, uh, I was telling you the idea is parabolics of order p, and the extra uh, surfaces that should be able to detect now, these are Conway spheres for the orbifold somehow, okay? Okay, so what's the idea of the proof here? So, um, so you take uh, this, the character variety of this gamma p, and uh, it should be, uh, so what it is, you take, it's the intersection of the character variety, the whole character variety with the um, hyperplane where the, the, well, a bunch of hyperplanes where the trace of the meridian is cos k, p, k pi over p, okay? So that's just saying that uh, the meridian is order p. So generically, since uh, the components of uh, the character of variety of gamma uh, of dimension n minus 2, this guy, this extra intersection, and you know that uh, the trace of the meridian is non-constant, the, the intersection has dimension at most n minus 3, okay? On the other hand, uh, we also know that the parabolic component has dimension n minus 2. And when you reduce everything mod p, well, you can't see the difference between the character variety of gamma p and the character variety of parabolic, well, the sub-variety of parabolic characters. So on one hand, your expected dimension is, is a is at most n minus 3, on the other hand, is at least n minus 2. And that's generically the case. So generically, P ramifies. Okay, well, this is the first 
type of example. So you have a jump in dimension. dimension ex the expected dimension grows. And the other results give you the other type of ramification. OK, so um, okay, so, so what are we considering here? We're considering a two-component link. So you have to, cons to think of this two-component link in the following way. You have your knot. It's periodic. So there's, um, there's this symmetry, this rotation, which has an axis. And now you take the quotient of your knot and of the axis by the action of your, your symmetry. What you get is S3, and the knot and this axis give you a two-component link. And this component link is L. A is just the image of the axis, and K naught is the image of your knot. Okay? And it goes both ways. If you have a link like that, where A is a, you know, an unknotted circle, and the linking number between A and K0 is co-prime with P. You just branch, take the cyclic branch cover of the three sphere along A, and you lift, you lift K0 and gives you a knot, well, okay, which is periodic. Um, so, so I'm, I say that for infinitely many prime p, the knot that you obtain that way, uh, so it's invariant character variety, the, character, the part of the, the sub-variety which is invariant by the action of the symmetry of order p, um, ramifies at p, ramifies when you take reduction mod p. So I'll try to explain why that's the case. Um, so theorem two tells us that you have a periodic knot of the, whose period has order, uh, symmetry has order p, and so uh, the invariant character variety contains at least, sometimes more, p minus one over two uh, one-dimensional components. And now again, you use the same trick. In, in uh, characteristic p, Elements of order P are periodic and vice versa. So um, if you take, if you consider the, the, the character variety over, uh, in characteristic P, uh, well, there's no difference between uh, components. OK, so maybe I should say something more, because otherwise it's not clear. So in this. This character, uh, these components there come from, uh, uh, should I say it now? No, I should, I'll say that later. Um, oh, yeah. So what are these components? These components uh, are just the intersection of the character variety of this um, two-component link with... Um, a bunch of hyperplanes, and these hyperplanes correspond to char characters uh, that are associated to representations in which the meridian of A, meridian of A, so where you ramify, uh, have order P in the representation. So it's just saying trace of the uh, matrix associated to the meridian uh, as is a twice cosinus of something. Okay. Um, so this is where these uh, components come from. But again, as I was saying, telling you, in characteristic P, having order P of being parabolic is the same thing. And well, what, what are parabolic components? These are just, well, you take uh, your character variety of the link L and you just intersect with trace of your meridian equal to two or something like that. And that does not depend on P. It's just something, some number, I don't know, 300, whatever. But it's a fixed number of com one dimensional components. And if you're at P, you don't ramify, you have to see the same number of one dimensional components. 
but that's fixed for almost every p, while you expect them to be at least p minus 1 over 2, and that grows. So at a certain point, you, have to, you get ramification, and you get, oh, some components have disappeared somewhere. Where? I don't know. I don't even have an idea where the, well, yes, I have an idea. The idea is that all these hyperplanes get crashed down over a single hyperplane, and probably, probably, the multiplicity of these guys is different and takes care of the fact that you have more of them, but I'm not sure. That's probably the idea, anyway. Um, yeah, so that's what I was saying. Sorry, should have turned this. Okay, uh, yeah, I think I still have 10 minutes. Okay, so I'll try and say something about the proof of uh, the general result about symmetric knots. Uh, let's see what I want to say. I've already said something. So, so the idea I was saying is you can see your invariant sub-variety as a sub-variety of uh, some two-component link. Okay, why is that? Well, um, uh, you, you take this two-component link that I was explaining before. So it's the image of the knot and of, of the axis of the symmetry and the quotient by the action of the symmetry. And uh, of course, you have a, a, a short exact sequence here, okay, which is just a sequence of coverings. And, um, and the symmetry induces a symmetry of the character variety just by composition. And you're in, we are interested in the irreducible components of just the irreducible components, uh, characters of these uh, that live inside this invariant uh, subvariety. Why is that? Okay, that's something I should have said before. So remember, I told you. Quotients are very badly behaved in general, and you only, you only want, you want points to be close, so you, you consider, well, if you have um, orbits which are close, fine, otherwise you have to crash down things, etc. Well, the good thing is orbits of um, E-wraps are closed. So these are really well behaved, okay? So, um, so, so that's why you, all, you go and consider these guys. Um, so the, the rest of the, the, the characters um, form a Zariski closed set that we just disregard because it just, you know, very complex. I mean, it's well on one sense. It's in, on one hand, it's well understood. And on the other, uh, creates a lot of problems. So just forget about it. Um, note in particular that since the holonomy representation is irreducible, well, you have these this distinguished, exceptional, curve, whatever you want to call it, uh, sitting there. And it's also sitting there because um, the symmetry of the knot can be seen, if the knot is hyperbolic, can be seen as a, a, an hyperbolic isometry, and so um, it must be invariant by the action. So it's living there. Okay. Um, next. So uh, the exterior of the link, of the quotient link, is a sub-manifold inside the quotient of the exterior of the knot by the, um, the action of the symmetry. And actually, what's the difference? You, you get the second one from the first one by some uh, singular then filling, okay, with a ramification of order P in the core of your torus. 
Uh, and of course, to, if you look at the fundamental groups, you pass from the first to the second by quotienting. And this means that you, each representation of second gives you a representation of the first because the second is a, is a quotient, okay? So the character variety of the quotient of the exterior of the knot uh, sits inside, injects inside uh, the character variety of the link. On the other hand, uh, if you have um, a character uh, on this quotient, it, it induces a character on the exterior of the link of the knot just by uh, restriction, just by looking at this short exact sequence, right? You have a representation of the central term, and so you get a representation of the subgroup. But uh, the idea now is that if you just look at in irreducible characters, uh, this map as an, uh, is bijective, okay? So this gives you a birational equivalence between uh, the, the characters of the character variety of uh, uh, the, the quotient of the exterior of the knot without, uh, without the, the abelian part, okay? And uh, the uh, invariance of variety uh, without the abelian part. And why is that? Well, uh, well, well, well. So assume you have an invariant character, okay? So you got this. And this is, assume that uh, your character is irreducible. So you, what does that mean? You fix a representation here, okay, such that k of rho is, is this one. And if you compose with, uh, with your symmetry, this is a conjugate of this one. And since the action of, is nicely, basically translated on, on the fiber here, okay, well, you can find a matrix, okay, such that uh, this guy here is uh, induced by conjugacy with this matrix. Of course, you have in the, uh, the matrix is only defined up to sign in principle because the action by conjugacy factors through PSL. But the fact that the order of phi is odd tells you that you can choose a well-determined sign. Okay, so you can choose uniquely something, okay, some matrix, some element of SL2, uh, which works like this. And you just map, uh, in that exact sequence, you just map, I should say that this exit sequence splits, so you can, you have, a, you can see Z over P somewhere in, in the central group, and you just map the generator of the Z over P that you see in that central group uh, to this uni unique matrix that you've, that you've constructed here. Okay, so once you've got that, you see, uh, what, sh what we are saying here is that if you just look at the uh, invariant character variety and only the components that contain irreducible characters, that's birationally equivalent to uh, something that lives inside uh, uh, the character variety of the link. Okay? Um, okay. Yeah, that's what I was saying. And now you know that your excellent curve lives there, the curve that co curves that contain the, the allonomy. But then, well, everything's defined over Z. So, uh, well, you, you have a Galois group acting somewhere. And, well, there's no, I mean, of course, geometrically, um, uh, 
uh, this, the image of the meridian of A is sent to something which has a well-defined angle. It's two, pi, two cos uh, two pi over P. But that's just one choice uh, for the, for, uh, uh, of solution of the minimal polynomial for uh, the, cos the, the cosinus, two, twice the cosinus of 2 pi over p. Uh, the others work as well. So you have your Galois group acting there, and that gives you the other components. Okay, I'm sort of hand-waving here, but that's really the idea behind this. And since everything, all the construction is algebraic, uh, well, all the properties that you see on, the, on, the, on your ex excellent curve or your distinguished curve, the one that contains the actual uh, holonomy character, well, are preserved when you look at the other components. There's no reason why they should change because everything is done over Z. So, say, the risky tangent group is the same, whatever you want is the same. And, well, the same, the same properties hold, and in particular, those components that you see there are actual components of the variety and not just of the invariant subvariety. Um, yeah, I was just saying two words about the proposition. Um, and this is even more hand-waving, but basically, um, you can also, as you, I, I've told you, you can always describe your periodic knot in terms of some quotient to component link. And in fact, that's true even for um, free periodic knots, only that the link is not at all unique. In, for the periodic knots, there's a well-defined choice. In the other case, it's not, but still you can do that. And What's the difference in, in between the two cases? Uh, well, in one case, you want the meridian of your, uh, you know, around A, which is the axis, to be order P. And that we've seen is just intersecting the variety with a bunch of hyperplanes. And so since the hyperplanes are different, well, you get separate dif different components. On the other hand, when you have uh, a free symmetry, um, the, the, the dense surgery you are doing along the A, uh, it's, an, it's an actual dense surgery. It's not a singular dense surgery. Okay? So it's just you're on the, ex on the, on the A component, you're just killing some mu to the power p, say mu is the meridian, and lambda to some k, which is prime with p, whatever. And, well, you see, this has many chances to give you some uh, irreducible component instead of a bunch of hyperplanes. And generically, let's say, that's the case. You can construct examples where it's well-behaved. And so uh, the number of intersections that you have only depends on L and this, well, this hypersurface, which you expect to be irreducible, and not on P. Not on P, in some, in some sense. Well, and that's basically the idea. And, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm a couple of minutes too late, so thank you for your attention.